Three. Well, the National Prosecuting Authority has welcomed the sentencing of former real estate agent, that's Vicky Momberg, as a victory for the country's constitution. Momberg was found guilty on four counts of criminal injuria after racially attacking a police officer in 2016. Well, Magistrate Praveena Raghunandan denied Momberg bail today after being sentenced to three years behind bars with one year suspended. This sentencing follows her racist rant toward a police officer who were trying to assist her after smash and grab incident. The court found Momberg had used the K-word over 40 times. Her application for leave to appeal will be heard next Wednesday. This is the first time that someone is sentenced to a prison term for criminal injuria. The magistrate indicated that previous non-custodial sentences for criminal injuria have not acted as a deterrent for racists in the country. Well, this case of convicted racist uh, Vicky Momberg has once again thrown the spotlight on the pressing need for more focus on social cohesion efforts in South Africa. More than 20 years into our new democracy, social cohesion and eradicating racial violence is still a huge challenge. Well, Dr. Raj Govinde is an anthropologist and a social cohesion expert. He joins us now from our Durban studios. Good afternoon, Dr. Govinde, and thank you once again for sharing your time with us on the SABC News Desk. No, good afternoon to you and the viewers. Uh, well, Momba given today uh, jail time in this unprecedented judgment uh, by Magistrate Raghunandan, uh, saying she views Momba's actions as intentional, uh, as the police officer was just doing his job when she verbally abused him. Uh, what kind of impact do you think, Dr. Governor, this is going to have on the public consciousness in terms of social cohesion and nation building right now? As you have correctly identified that more recently there's been widespread sporadic incidents of racism throughout the country and it is becoming a serious challenge to social cohesion and nation building. This particular judgment by uh, the magistrate at the Randberg Magistrate Court, it's a clear indication that uh, uh, races out there need to be aware because this is an unprecedented judgment and I think it augurs well for the future of eradicating racism in this country. Uh, previously, the, the uh, interventions and the charges were very, very minimal and very light. And I think uh, imprisonment is a clear indication that we are now meaning business in South Africa in terms of eradicating racism. Uh, Dr. Governor, racism and prejudice remains a serious human rights issue that affects us all in the country. Should there not at this stage be a specific law to criminalize racism and work has started there or, or any act that perpetuates racism or glorifies apartheid uh, because uh, there are clearly those who are still struggling uh, to embrace universal human rights values uh, but would such legislation when it does come about boost national reconciliation uh, efforts or, or or would, uh, or would we see jail terms like this uh, really enhancing national reconciliation uh, and social cohesion efforts? Yes, criminalizing racism is one aspect of moving towards finding uh, answers towards the social uh, problems that we have in our country in terms of racism. And, and this judgment together with the uh, uh, efforts towards criminalizing racism is a clear indication that South Africa is seriously is very serious when it comes to satisfying the needs and aspirations of its diverse communities and I think uh, people are not very very careful when they make these utterances uh, the case in question with Vicky Momberg is a clear indication that she had she had no remorse whatsoever throughout the judgment throughout the the court appearances and so on so so i think the judgment today of the magistrate is a clear indication that we yes. now mean business okay. in this country uh, dr governor it's all take this case but in particular taking on increased pertinence or significance it being human rights month and it was oliver tumbo who once said that the demon of racism has to be uprooted in its totality because it brutalizes entire peoples. Now, he said this back in 1961, in the year of the Sharpeville massacre, but more than 50 odd years on, we still have one of the highest inequity indices in the world. 
where income, where uh, income resources opportunities are disproportionately focused in one segment of the population. And the reality for all of us is that the white community in the country still enjoys social capital, generational wealth, etc. I'm just trying to understand, we want to understand what is the relationship between social cohesion and economic inequality and how can we start to nurture and how can we become more socially cohesive when the economy is still so skewed in the favor of the minority? Uh, social cohesion is an ideal in which we need to strive towards. It is not an end result. Throughout the world, we do not find 100% guaranteed socially cohesive societies. However, uh, you are quite correct in stating that inequalities is a contributing factor towards not achieving social cohesion. In South Africa, the national indicators <coughs> clearly demonstrate that over 50% of the country's wealth is distributed toward only 10% uh, of society. Whereas 10% of the country's uh, population groups are uh, 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 finding it very, very difficult to meet the uh, daily challenges of society. So it is very clear that unemployment, poverty and inequalities in South Africa are a clear contributing factor towards impeding social cohesive uh, actions in this country. And uh, if there are more people that are, uh, that are employed, there will be obviously less people that are engaging in unsavory activities and so on. It is indeed praiseworthy that yesterday the president launched, yes, uh, youth employment services, which is working towards a partnership between government and the private sector in order to create job opportunities for the youth. And by doing this, then we find there will be less efforts being made towards eradicating uh, unemployment, etc. And, and by doing this, crime will decrease, education standards will improve, land uh, uh, ownership will improve, improve, housing will be provided because people can afford it now. Okay, so, Dr. So Governor, very quickly, definitely uh, uh, there is uh, we are real running out of time. So very quickly, uh, the NDP sets 2030 as a deadline uh, for us to reach the goal of nation building and social cohesion. And it states by then that we as South Africans should be more conscious of the things we have in common than our differences. Will we ever reach a point where apartheid is no longer a part of our living memory? Uh, and will that aid in social cohesion? And is all this achievable in just now 12 years' time? That is an ideal that we are all striving towards. Efforts are being made at private and government sectors in order to bring people together to start debating, discussing uh, ways and uh, opportunities to be created in order to eradicate uh, you know, racism and, and work towards a socially cohesive society. But like I said, uh, it is just a, a dream that you will have a totally social, socially cohesive society. But if everybody comes together, like the uh, uh, magistrate said that human, uh, 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 human beings are one in, the sky, in South Africa and in the world. And we all need to work together in order to provide opportunities for people to live in a cohesive society. And that ideal will obviously be reached someday, but it will not be eradicated permanently. Dr. Raj Govinda, thank you for your time joining us from the Durban SABC News Studios. Uh, he's an anthropologist and social cohesion expert. Thank you for sharing your time with us so generously on the SABC News Desk.